In this video, we're going to show you how to make the world's most universal plywood stand. You see what I did there? Universal plywood? Okay, so... <laughs> That's bad. Hi guys, welcome back to the Universal Plywood channel. So, we're going to take this really cool piece of marine ply, and we're going to cut it up, and we're going to take some nice dowel, little two pieces of dowel, or one piece of dowel, which we'll cut in half. And that's all we need. We don't need many, many pieces. We'll take you through the parts list in a minute again. The whole idea here is that this is the kind of thing that you can do quickly. It will last you for as long as you have phones because you don't have to upgrade it, change it, make it bigger, make it smaller. It's one thing that just works for everything. Let's get cracking. We'll bring you in close, show you the components, and we're going to bring out some interesting little tools. We're going to use this guy, which is called a kerf maker. I'll show you how he works. And that's going to help us cut a perfect size groove. One of the hardest things to do when you're cutting plywood is making grooves uh, and dados. And we'll discuss the difference between grooves and dados. But to make a perfect size slot, into which you put another piece of plywood. It's very difficult to get that accurate. So this is a cool little toy that helps us get a very, very accurate groove, and I'll show you how that works. But other than that, pretty much it's the most simple thing you've ever made. Let's get cracking. All right, so let's talk dimensions. We've worked out that the average cell phone is about this size, um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our cell phone stand 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters, okay? And that's just the front piece. We're gonna have a small kicker at the back, which we're going to measure separately. But basically, if we take those dimensions out of a full sheet of plywood, you should be able to make cell phone stands for 144 of your closest friends. So that's Christmas covered for a while, at least. What's important here is we're going to cut plywood and we're gonna cut some strips, all right? So we're gonna do what we call ripping and cross-cutting. When we refer to ripping, what we mean is that we're going to rip with the grain of the outer layer. Now remember, plywood's got two layers, right? It's got a layer over on this side, on the outside, and it's got a layer on this side. So it's got both of your faces have the grain going, in this case, in this direction, okay? But we've got to remember that underneath this, there are layers that are going this way as well. So when we're going to cut our long lengths, we're going to cut with the grain here like that. So we're going to try and go with the grain. So we're going 10 centimeters. We're going to cut a 10 centimeter strip here. Then we're going to rip across the grain and we're going to rip 20 centimeters in this direction. So that means now we're cutting across the grain. So a couple of things about cutting across the grain with plywood you need to know about. Number one is that it's going to tear out if you don't do something to prevent that. So what do you do to prevent tear out? Use a great new sharp blade. That's the best advice I can give you. So if your blade is dull or it has too few teeth, it's a big ripping blade, then maybe that's not the right blade for you. But what you can do is you can get a new blade, you can clean your old blade. You don't have to necessarily go out and rush out and buy a new blade. You can just clean the one you've got. It makes an amazing difference to just clean your blade. Get a blade with more teeth, in other words, a cross-cut blade, a blade that is specific to cross-cutting. And in fact, nowadays, you can actually go and buy a blade that is specific for cutting plywoods. Okay, it's got something to do with the angles of the teeth, and it's very technical. I can get into that, but I'm sure it doesn't matter all that much to you. What matters is that you need a good blade with lots of teeth. Okay, so we're going to show you how to cross-cut, how to rip, and we're going to get our components together. Then we have to cut a groove in the back of our plywood to fit our little kicker at the back into. And I'll show you guys how to get that super accurate. Okay, let's get to the table saw, let's get measuring, and let's get cutting. First thing we're gonna do is set our rip fence on our table saw. We're gonna set it up. That's 10 centimeters. And if you're in the States watching this video, or someplace where imperial is more important than metric, and I can never understand why that would be the case, uh, it's about four inches. Four inches is about 10 centimeters, so roughly four inches. At least that's what it says here on my table saw. Right, we're gonna do some ripping. Again, a couple of things. When you're cutting plywood, it makes sense to not have your blades stick out way above your plywood. You actually want your plywood to, your, your blade to just be above the thickness of what you're cutting, okay? Couple of reasons for that. Number one, it's a lot safer because your blade isn't sticking out further than it should. And number two, less of your blade is traveling through the wood, which means that it's gonna be a cleaner, faster, better cut. Let's get our safety gear on and let's get cutting. In case you're wondering what this uh, piece of wood in my hand is, it's my push stick. And 
it's a good idea to use a push stick when you're using a table saw or any sort of thing where you're going across the table saw. So you really want to use a push stick because it protects your fingers and keeps your workpiece nice and flat. So. Okay, now we've done our ripping, we've got our long pieces. What's left to do is to cut them to length and the leftover piece we're gonna use for our kicker. So none of this will be wasted. What we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, put my cross cut sled onto the table saw. Now cross cut sled, you'll see what that is in a second, but it's just a device that helps you cut things safely and accurately if you're doing repeat cuts. Okay, so we're back at the table saw. We've got our cross cut sled ready to go. And our cross cut sled is basically just, you guessed it, some plywood um, that's nice and sturdy. And I've got a fence on the front and a fence on the back. And that's gonna help us cut nice and accurate. So let's get to measuring. The first thing we're gonna do is measure 200 mils from the one side. Okay, so I'm gonna stick that over there. And we're gonna set up a stop block right up against our blade so that we know we're going to cut exactly 200 mils. So there we go, I've slid that up to there. That's accurate. Now all I have to do is switch on the table saw and push this through. It's nice and safe, it's nice and easy, couldn't be more simple. Here we go. Okay, that was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? So we've got our pieces now for our, um, for our main board or our backboard of the cell phone stand. And these leftover pieces here, these are the parts that we're gonna use to make a kicker. Now, what exactly is a kicker? Well, what we're going to do is we're gonna take the front part of this thing and we're gonna insert a little kicker stand into the back here like that. So that's going to determine the angle at which this leans. So if we put this at a certain place, we can actually hold it and test it and see. That's, that seems, if I hold there like that, that seems about right. Okay, so if that's about right, that means that I can say, well, if I put that in there, we can more or less guess or measure that. Let's call that 50 mils, five centimeters or two inches. <laughs> For those of you who insist on, on Imperial. And we're going to cut a groove that this component fits into this component. Okay. Not easy to do when you're just eyeballing it and you're just guessing. So I'm gonna show you guys a cool little toy called a kerf maker. And what this guy will do, is this will help us cut the exact kerf for this piece to fit into the other one. Now, when you do that, it allows you to just use glue and fit this thing in nice and perfect so that you don't have to worry about using other fasteners. So it saves you time and it saves you money. What is a kerf maker? It is basically a little tool that helps you allow for the width of your blade when you're offsetting uh, a cut. In other words, when you're making cuts, you need to allow for the thickness of your blade. Now, in this case, this blade is about two millimeters, but I don't want to just take a guess and cut my, cut my kerfs. And as I could take this, hold that there, take a pencil, draw that line, and draw a line on the other side, um, and I would hope to be accurate. The problem with that is that I always forget that there's a, there's a blade kerf to deal with. So if I set up something or a stop block and I forget to allow for the kerf, I'm gonna end up with a, with a groove um, that is too wide or a dado that is too wide. In fact, hang on, quick aside here. What is the difference? Most people always, people always wanna know what's the difference between a groove and a dado. They're essentially the same thing, but a dado goes across the grain and a groove goes with the grain. So that's a bit of trivia for you just in case you ever end up in a trivial pursuit competition and need to know the difference between a groove and a dado. So like woodworkers trivial pursuit, there you go. That's the difference. Let's get this set up and we will show you how to use this guy. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna measure from the end, I'm gonna make a little mark here at 50 mils, five centimeters, or 
two inches. Right. So that's where I want that. Now, in order to help me set up my whole kerf maker, I'm going to advance my sled and I'm going to put my blade exactly on that line. So that's where that is. I'm going to move this stop block out the way for a second. Okay, so how do we use this kerf maker? It's actually very simple to use. Once you've, had it, once you've got it set up, remember that you've got your offset set for your blade and you've got your kerf maker set for the thickness of your material and you've got your, your dials both uh, tightened up so you're ready to use your kerf maker. So all you need to do is place the piece of wood that you're going to cut on the mark that you want to cut it. So if I know that I want to cut this at 50 mils, I'm going to mark 50 mils over there, and I'm going to slide my blade forward so that I can put that right on the 50 mil mark. That's where that is. Now I can take my kerf maker and put my kerf maker up against my stop block there like that, and I'm going to put my stop block up against my kerf maker, and this becomes my spacer. So now I get to run the blade over the wood, and then once I've done the one side of my dado, I can take my kerf maker, switch it around, and now I'm going to butt up against this part over here, shift my workpiece along by the thickness of the wood that I'm cutting, allowing for the thickness of my blade and make my second cut. And that will give me a perfect data. Okay, so let's check to see what this fits like. There we go, absolutely perfect fit. You don't get better than that. That's about as accurate as it gets. Okay, so there's our stand standing at the right angle. So all we need to do now is add our dowels to the base over here so that we could rest our phone. And you're gonna see why I've chosen to do dowels in a second because it makes total sense. You don't have to worry about where your cable goes because there is just a place created naturally by the dowels. So let's get our dial holes marked out and drilled, get our dials in, and we're done. That's the front end. And all right, so if it's 100 mils, we can go, let's go 30 in from each side. So we go 30 and 70. So let's go 30 there and 70 there. That's 30 in from each side. And let's go up. Where's our mark? Let's go up 30 mils. 30 mils up seems good. So there's our one hole. 30 mils there is our other hole. Right, so we've got our holes marked out. Let me grab an awl. All right, so I'm going to use an awl just to mark where I want to drill my holes. So that's nice and straightforward. And I'm going to use a drill bit with a brad point drill bit, so a wood drill bit, and I'm going to drill into my wood Nice and straight. And we're not going to go all the way through. We don't need to. So we have our two dial holes all drilled. Next thing we've got to do is decide the length of our dials and cut those to length. We're going to use our same crosscut sled to do this. Now this is fairly small stuff, so it's not a good idea to have your fingers this close to the saw, so we're going to use a push stick or a something else to hold this down, even a, even a pen or a pencil, it doesn't matter, but don't get your fingers close to the blade here, this is where people get injured. There we go, that'll work just perfectly. See plywood saving the day again, gotta love the stuff. All right, cool, so let's go and just trim a straight edge off here first of our dial. We've got a very small piece of dial here, but that's okay. Uh, 
And now we're going to use a stop block to determine how much of our dial we need. So let's move this along. And let's say we want, and I'm really just guessing this, but this looks about, looks about right. Okay, let's cut this. Wow, that went flying. Did he survive? He did. Okay. Right, so he's going to go in there. Let's see now if we can get this one cut without incident. <laughs> You'll probably do the same thing actually. Okay, so for the observant among you, you've realized that I've swapped sleds to a much smaller sled and that's to help me cut small pieces um, a lot safer. So what I've got here again is a tiny piece of dial that's left and you can cut really small parts like this nice and safely if you use a little piece of scrap just to hold things down. And there we have our dial. Okay, so we have one component two components and our dials and we're ready to assemble. I mean, what could be more simple? So first things first, I think let's get our dials put in. We don't need to put a lot of glue in, it's a nice tight fit. We're just gonna put a tiny bit of Gorilla Glue in the hole, just tap that home with the mallet. Nothing could be more simple than that, really. Now we're simply gonna put our kicker in the back and we already know that this fits perfectly. And there it is, a perfectly good cell phone stand. All we have to do now is a little bit of cleanup and a bit of sanding. I don't think there's even a simpler project out there. I mean, unless you're making a stick. But other than that, this is about the next most simple project there is out there. And just remember, out of one sheet, you've got 144 other ones you can make. So there's a lot to play with here. And hey, presto, we have a cell phone stand that works. How cool is that? <laughs> Okay, so all I want to do now is just, this just needs a little bit of sanding and cleanup because it looks a lot of tear out there and it doesn't look very neat. Okay, so here it is, guys. How easy was that? Now, remember I said to you that there was a reason for the pins, the dowels, as opposed to another way. And this is why. Have a look how cool it is. I can just stick my charger into the bottom of my phone and it doesn't matter what phone I have, as long as I can put my charger there, I'm all good. So I don't have to worry about drilling fiddly holes and redirecting cables and having things go underneath and any of that malarkey. That's just the simplest, best solution I think I've seen. This is a simple project, you've got to give it a try. Go to get down to Universal Plywoods, get some of this stuff. Uh, remember, like I said, you can buy one sheet and make a whole lot of these things. You can make them for a market to sell them. You can give them to your friends and your family. You can buy 144 cell phones, whatever blows your hair back. There it is. Give it a try. Remember, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. You know, if you want to subscribe, that'd be cool. It'd be good to have you back here. And uh, yep, if there's anything you want to see about the Kerf Maker or any of the other things I've used in the video, just have a look in the links below and we'll see you guys next time. Oh. Hmm. Uh oh. <sighs>